Google Ads is making a few updates to how search queries work in the platform. There are going to be two main areas for this adjustment. They're going to be around brand terms and misspellings. Now, for some portion of these updates, we'll be able to be in the interface, and I'll kind of walk you through what's going to change. But in some areas, the changes are a little bit too new. They haven't taken effect yet, so we're going to be looking at Google Ads help articles to make sure that you understand what's going to change and how you need to prep for it. We're going to start off in one of the help articles from Google, because as you can see, even though this announcement was made about a month ago, as of the release of this video, a lot of these changes still aren't showing up in some of our accounts. So I need to walk through them someplace where you can actually have something to look at. As Google says here, they're making updates to query matching. And as I mentioned, there are two key areas for this. Scroll down just a bit. And the first area of focus is around brand traffic. As Google mentions, in previous years, they rolled out brand lists, which can allow you to focus on specific brands with your campaigns, whether it's trying to target specific brands for search or exclude brand traffic from Performance Max. But apparently, advertisers were not happy with that, or at least that's what Google says. So they're taking brand lists one step further. They're going to start recommending brand inclusions for broad match. So this means that it will start applying to broad match keywords. And if we scroll down even just a little bit more and see down here at the bottom, that it will also start to apply to dynamic search ads as well. So all keyword match types as well as dynamic search ads will be eligible to use brand inclusion lists. And as we scrolled past just a second ago, Google's going to start to show you the suggestions they have for these brand lists on the recommendations tab. So this first image that you see up here, will highlight when Google thinks that you'll be able to get better performance if you use brand inclusion lists for your campaigns. If you then click on some of the recommendations, you'll see the image down here below. They'll tell you which campaigns, which brands that you can take a look at their recommendation, apply it right there, or you can go create a new one and manually do it yourself. Now, in theory, all of this sounds well and good to me. Go ahead, send some recommendations. I'll either apply or not apply a brand list to my campaigns. And having it applied to broad match and DSA sounds great. But there is a catch to this. And this is where I'm not quite as pleased with this rollout. If we scroll down just a little bit here, you can see in this paragraph, brand inclusions are only available for broad match campaigns. So when you apply the recommendation from the recommendations tab, it will also turn on the broad match campaign setting, which in turn updates all the keywords in your campaign to broad match keywords. Now, if you've paid attention to many videos on this channel, or quite frankly, almost anything that Google puts out recently, they love broad match keywords, huge fans of broad match. Me, not so much. They definitely have their time and place. If you're interested in how we approach broad match keywords, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. And I'll admit that over time, they have gotten better, but I'm still really weary of them. If you're not following on what I mean by the broad match campaign setting, let me hop into an account real quick. And if you've set up a new campaign recently, or if you're regularly in the settings section, we can just come down here to settings for this existing campaign, scroll all the way down to the bottom, open this up. And this is the broad match section. Right at the campaign level, all you'd have to do is turn on broad match keywords. And you'll see here, use broad match keywords for your entire campaign. They want you to use this in combination with smart bidding. But basically, this takes away all phrase match, all exact match terms, turns everything into broad match. I'm going to go ahead and undo this because I'm not interested in that at all. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the broad match campaign setting, there is an entire help article that will walk you through how this will work. And then it will show you the impact on keyword prioritization within broad match terms. It still suggests that it's going to start off with exact match as the first priority, phrase and broad match as the second. Then there's some AI learning down at the bottom. And then ad rank is the fourth level of prioritization. And for some folks, this campaign setting might work well. But for me, I'm still old school. I like using my exact and phrase match terms. So while I am a fan of utilizing brand lists for broad match terms and DSA campaigns, because it feels like the right thing to do, if you want to apply it to an exact match and phrase match term, seems to make sense you'd want to use it for broad and DSA. But I'm not willing just yet to turn all of my campaigns to all broad match keywords, just so I can use this option. 
If your account has these recommendations in it and you opt into this, I would love to hear how it works, see how it goes. The benefit is at least that this is intended for brand campaigns since it's a brand list. So maybe that helps narrow things down a bit. Still makes me a little bit worried. So proceed with caution, advertise at your own risk, all the good disclaimers for this one. But the second change Google's gonna make, I'm a little bit bigger fan of. So let's scroll down a little bit further here. And this is gonna focus on misspelled keywords. So for this first subheading here, we're gonna get more visibility in the search terms report and all of it is going to come from misspelled terms. It might seem hyperbolic, but Google says that there are 1.5 million different ways for you to misspell YouTube. I'll take their word for it. Those are numbers I can't quite comprehend. But in the past, Google wasn't able to put any of those misspellings into a matched query in your search terms report because of privacy laws. But now they're changing the settings around misspelling specifically, and they will now be attributed to the proper spelling of a term. So what that means is that about 9% of your search terms that are previously categorized as other in the search terms report are now gonna find their way into the different line items. So what that means is that when you're in your search terms report, if you scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see that there are other search terms. Right now, there's not a huge percentage of clicks that's being associated there, but effectively about 9% of these terms are probably going to find their way into one of the line items in this report, simply because what was in the other category was just a misspelling of one of these other search terms. So unfortunately, I couldn't show you the other line while also filtering for any terms that I can't show you in this report. So I'm sorry all the search terms have to be blurred out, but basically just think of this change as taking some of the data from here, and reapplying it back up into the main categories up above. And now the last change that's gonna come with this is actually gonna have to do with misspellings and negative keywords. So Google is actually going to roll out the same misspelling behavior into negative keywords meaning that we no longer have to create negative keywords to match every single version of a misspelling. Using their example up here again, since there are 1.5 million ways to misspell YouTube, we can now do this with just one negative keyword that is YouTube, whereas in the past, you would have had to apply 1.5 million variations if you wanted to exclude every single misspelling option. The first line in this chart down here is gonna be the easiest way to look at that. So if you add YouTube as a negative keyword to your campaign, you are going to exclude the term for YouTube music where it's spelled properly. You will not exclude music streaming. You will exclude this YouTube mismatched version and you will not exclude Google Music app. Now the reason that they gave the example of Google Music app as well as music streaming is because this table will also give other ideas about how brand inclusions and brand exclusions will work depending on which campaign you're applying them to. And it has to do with what the machine learning can understand about your intent behind a brand list. So obviously brand exclusions, if somebody typed in YouTube, you wanna exclude somebody who spelled it right, spelled it wrong, and the Google Music app, which is probably people trying to watch stuff on YouTube. But just music streaming in general, that doesn't apply to YouTube. And then the opposite of all this is true. If you want to include YouTube, you want the correct spelling, the misspelled, and the Google Music app because you're probably intending to use YouTube, but not music streaming because that's not branded to YouTube. But for now, I wanna really focus mostly just on these keywords. In my mind, this is a really big win because I think for a long time, we've been trying to narrow down the behavior for the misspellings in keywords. And back in 2010, when I started in this industry, we actually created lots of positive keywords to target all of these misspellings, but given the changes to match types and how they are much less specific than they used to be, we only really needed to create the main keyword with the proper spelling, and it would apply to all of the misspellings. And in my mind, it was a big oversight that the negative keyword side didn't work the same way. So this one, I'm a really big fan of. This should save you a lot of negative keyword applications and should prevent you from showing up on all these different misspelled versions of a brand name, or quite honestly, any other keyword. These are not specific to just brand terms. These focus on just a keyword in general. So if you add a negative, brand or otherwise, it will start working with all of the misspellings that can come from that term. So as I mentioned, a lot of these changes, it's tough to show in the interface because they either haven't rolled out 
or it's hard to show you how negative keywords work in the interface because all they're gonna do is block the term. So hopefully you're happy with these changes, whether it's around the brand lists and match types or the misspelling of search terms and the negative keyword behavior that comes with it. I'm 50-50, the brand list stuff, I'll hold off for now, but the negative keywords, big fan. If you've got any other questions about these updates from Google or anything else in the Google Ads interface, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.